All right, staying with the budget now, Democrats in Albany have total control over the budget process. And that's because they hold a majority in both the state Senate and the Assembly, and they have the governor's office. But despite that, this year's budget talks haven't gone well. And that led to a late budget and a fuzzy picture of what happened behind the scenes in negotiations. For more on all that, I spoke with Assemblymember Ed Raw, the top-ranking Republican on the Assembly Ways and Means Committee, which negotiates the budget. Assemblymember Raw, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I'll preface this by saying we're talking before a budget deal has been announced. We're talking on Wednesday. And that brings up the conversation that I wanted to have with you. So as of today, we are almost a week late on the state budget. You're somebody, you're the top ranking Republican on the Ways and Means Committee, which negotiates the budget. So from your perspective, what does it say about state government right now that we don't have a budget right now about a week after the deadline? Well, I mean, it tells me something's uh, broken. Uh, we've had really single party rule for four years in New York. And, you know, this is the second straight year when it, in a situation where we're doing a budget extender. Um, and I mean, we know that the issues that are out there are really many of them are things that came onto the table late in the process, which I think I have a huge problem with, as do many uh, with regard to transparency. Um, but you know, this is one of our basic functions of our of our legislature and our government and not being able to get it done is, is not good. Yeah. How do you think that we could improve this process? And not obviously not this year because it's almost done, but it seems like every year the budget process is this this process of going behind closed doors, negotiating things in secret and then things pop out at a moment's notice and suddenly everything happens all at once. How do we make it better? Well, I mean, I. I I'd have to start with, uh, I, I think, more input from you know the rank and file in the legislature, certainly the inclusion of the minority conferences in some of these conversations. Uh, but, but also, you know, I mean, the answer the governor gave the other day saying this is fairly typical. Yeah, that's what the problem is. Um, I think there's been too much of, you know, the players changing, but but the process not. People just say, hey, this is how it is, uh, and, and they accept that. So somebody really needs to just step forward and say, no, we're not going to do it this way. We want every bill you know, introduced by March 28th so it can age for three days uh, in accordance with the state constitution. The public knows what's in them and, and then pass them in that manner. So I, I think one of the players at some point needs to just put their foot down and say, we're not going to do it this way anymore. What do you think that looks like? Because obviously you can't negotiate the budget or any piece of legislation out in you know the middle of the grocery store or anything like that. At some point, something's going to happen privately. So what do you think it would look like to have a budget process that's more transparent, we would know more around the deadline, and hopefully be able to come to a conclusion where you have lawmakers looking at these bills before they actually vote on them? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we do have processes in place like say our conference committees. We had one round of conference committees weeks ago and, and that was really it. Um, you know, at, at least you can do that process where you come out, come out with your table targets for, for you know, different committees and, and let uh, there be some transparency to the process in that way. I, I, think, I think that goes a long way instead of, you know, using the, um, the conference committees really as kind of, you know, Okay, we're going to do one so that we, you know, we we fulfilled that obligation and then move, and then move on to uh, everything happening behind closed doors. You know, it's been, like I said, weeks uh, since we had that one round of conference committees. And I should say, you mentioned something before that's really important for viewers to know is that the minorities in both the Senate and the Assembly are not typically involved in budget negotiations. The majorities block them out. So, in a perfect world where you would be able to have some input on this, what would that look like? Would you like to see uh, more uh, more closed doors negotiations with the majority on a budget? How would you like to see that develop? Well, I, I think including uh, you know the mi minority leaders uh, or, or their representatives, you know, in, in some of these major conversations, whether it's um, just bringing you know a different perspective, you know, like. Uh, with with this bail conversation, uh, I, I mean, I hope they're getting input from from you know DAs and people in law enforcement. But we have we have many people on our on our uh, side of the aisle in the assembly who um, you know are former prosecutors, are former law enforcement officers. So when when you get into those substantive substantive type of discussions, 
there's an opportunity to just bring extra voices into the room. How much of this do you think is the pandemic? Obviously, there have been restrictions in the Capitol at the start of session. They're a little bit more relaxed now. Uh, certain people, like reporters, still can't go on the assembly floor uh, for an extended period of time anyway. So how much of this do you think is COVID compared to years before? You've been here for a number of years, so you can compare this to when we didn't have COVID. Yeah, I, I, th- I think, you know, it's impacting the negotiations less than it has obviously the last two years uh two years ago obviously it was you know everybody was completely remote and all all that type of stuff uh you know the the majorities are conferencing in person um people are in and around the capitol we have protesters uh here uh again uh you know which was missing uh for for a couple years so so i i think it still obviously impacts things a little bit i mean i know there's been reports that you know many members of the governor's team, uh, you know, had gotten COVID recently. So there, there's still that out there. But um, I, I do think at some level, that's the COVID thing has become a little bit of an excuse to uh, really just do things in a non-transparent way that they've always been done. You know, an open-ended question for you, which, you know, it's hard to tell, but I don't want to give people a lot of optimism. Do you think that this will ever change? We started this conversation by talking about how things could change, but do you see a path where the majority say, you know, let's open up this process. Let's make it more inclusive, more transparent. Is there a path to that? Well, I'm, I'm always hopeful. Um, I, I don't think that under the current, you know, makeup of state government with uh, one party in control, you know, we're going to see that happen. Um, but, you know, one thing I'll say with, the newer members in the legislature in, in either party, um, there, there tends to be a lot more people talking about, you know, good government type uh, issues. And like, I'll, I'll give an example, a lot of the newer progressive uh, members, well, we don't agree on much else, um, have talked about, you know, good government, do, not, not making secretive deals, uh, you know, on economic development things and, and, and things of that nature. So, you know, as as the people change in the legislature, uh, like I said, hopefully somebody's willing to to take that first step. Uh, it would have to be a speaker or a majority leader or a governor to say, hey, we're going to open up this process. All right. Well, we got a year to see if things change. That's when the next state budget is due. Assembly member Ed Roth, thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Dan.